Over the past half a decade or so, I have considered Norwich City to be a Premier League side. I mean, they got promoted in the 2011-12 season and hung around in the top flight until their relegation two seasons later. A return to the Premier League was briefly lived in the 2014-15 season, but they failed and went straight back down to the championship where they have lingered since. It is now our job to get the Canaries back into the top flight and not only keep them around, but to grow, to turn them into European champions. Ladies and gentlemen, today we rebuild Norwich City. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. Welcome back to yet another FIFA 18 rebuilding video. We head back to the championship for today's rebuild as we take over the Canaries and rebuild Norwich. This is a rebuild I am so excited to get into. Been meaning to rebuild Norwich for a long time. But if you guys do go on to enjoy today's rebuild and you are new around here, make sure that you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below and make sure you leave a like on the video if you enjoy it. For those of you who have not seen a rebuilding challenge video yet, here are the rules. So the main objective of this is to take a team to the Champions League final. We will be simulating every single game up until the Champions League final, which we will play ourselves. We can make whatever transfers we like. Realistic, unrealistic, it does not matter. There's a big focus on the transfer window, only showing players that we sign. And finally, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. Let's get into the rebuild. So this is what our starting 11 looks like for this opening season with Norwich. Now, my main two areas I want to upgrade in this opening window is the left back spot and then the center mid spot instead of Vranic. Vranic and Husband need to replace them, need to set some foundations here for a hopeful Premier League return. Hopefully we can get to the Premier League straight from this first season, but we've got to really set ourselves up for it. But anyways, let's get into the transfer business now. So we have made our first signing for this Norwich rebuild. Joe Bryan is going to come to the club for £6 million from Bristol City. He is a 23-year-old left back. Great pickup for the starting eleven. Welcome to Norwich, Joe Bryan. A massive transfer here as we go to Everton and steal Mohamed Bezic from them. So Mo Bezic, the Bosnian midfielder, coming to Norwich for his value of £6.5 million. That is a massive addition to our midfield. Welcome to Norwich, Mohamed Bezic. So here we are on transfer deadline day with a player transfer. The first player to leave the club for this rebuild is going to be Matt Jarvis who is off to Nottingham Forest for £840,000. This was a bit of a weird transfer window. No real player transfer offers. We got three transfer offers and two of the players I was not selling in, Murphy and Close, and Jarvis leaves. But we got rid of Jarvis and we brought in Brian and Bezic, so we've definitely done good business. Let's see how we're going for our quest for promotion at the halfway spot. So here we are, 25 games into the championship season on the 1st of January, and we are top of the table, equal with Leeds United on 45 points, but realistically, we're not that comfortable. Look at how close the season is, the whole table is. If you go down to 15th place, Birmingham City, there is 10 points between us and them, so, if we don't continue on this decent run of form, we are in big danger of just heading into mediocrity. But if we continue performing well, we might be back in the Premier League. And Russell Martin has departed the club. He is off to Villa Park, signing with Aston Villa here for £1 million on the dot. So our current goalkeeper, Angus Gunn, is only here on loan. So I'm thinking we need to get ourselves a quality goalkeeper for next season, regardless of whether we're in the top division or in the championship still. So I've gone ahead and made ourselves our first pre-contract signing for the rebuild. Stefanos Capino from Olympiakos in the Greek League is going to be coming to the club next season on a free transfer. So looking very forward to having him in the club. One hour to go on transfer deadline day. No idea why this picture of Messi, look at me scroll through. There's a picture of Messi that keeps coming up in the background, but maybe it's a sign we should sign him. But uh, we've signed Capino for next season, got rid of Martin. Again, not too many offers, which is surprising. So 
I'll take it, whatever. Let's see if we can get promoted to the Premier League or if we have to go to the playoffs or if we have to go again. Get in there, boys. Top of the league. We're back in the Premier League at the first attempt. That was relatively simple. It is us and Middlesbrough automatically qualifying. Wolverhampton, Hull, Aston Villa and Derby all in the playoffs. We'll see the results of that pretty damn soon. Leeds dropped off a lot. And if we go down, Millwall, Bolton and Barnsley all relegated. Checking out the FA Cup. Were we involved at all? We were. We got all the way to the semi-finals. I don't know how I didn't see that, but we made it to the semi-finals where we lost to Watford. Man City went on and won the FA Cup. The same cannot be said about the Carabao Cup though. Leicester do go on and win that tournament. Hull City are going to be joining us back in the Premier League. They won the playoffs over uh, over Wolves. Barcelona won an El Clasico Champions League final. And Villarreal defeat Borussia Dortmund on penalties to win the Europa League. So season one was an outright success. Norwich are back in the Premier League. Now it's just a question of whether we can stay there or not. Let's get into season two and fight for our survival in the Premier League. I am over the moon with this signing here. A great pickup here to kick off life in the Premier League as we sign young English superstar Harry Winks from Tottenham for £13.2 million. A great pickup. He immediately becomes probably the best player in our team. So, welcome to Norwich, Harry Winks. Another transfer here as Marley Watkins is packing his bags and is heading back to the Championship. He signs for QPR for 1.2 million pounds. Another player leaving the club here as Alexander Tete is off to Hull City for 1.3 million pounds. So here we are with a player departure on deadline day. Evo Pinto is off to my favorite club of Fulham for 4.8 million pounds. And a few hours later, we replace Pinto with Kevin Mababu. I remember he used to play for Newcastle back in the day, but the Swiss right back Signs from Young Boys for 5.3 million pounds. Same overall as Pinto, but a lot better potential. So that's the end of the window. A pretty decent window. Winks and Mababu in. Watkins, Teddy, and Pinto out. Let's get to January and see how we're sitting. Hopefully not in the relegation fight. So to my surprise, we're actually doing really well at the moment. We're in eighth position, a spot I did not expect to be in. We're 10 points ahead of the drop zone. That is a terrific spot to be just about halfway through the season. And a funny sight to see, not a sore sight because we've seen it before, it's not an odd sight, but Leicester currently leading the Premier League ahead of Man United, Chelsea, West Ham and Stoke. And then looking down to the drop zone, it is going to be Crystal Palace, Middlesbrough and Hull City in the relegation fight. In terms of doing business in this window, it's not looking too good. We've got 1.7 million pounds to work with. Uh, I don't really want to be selling any of our players, but we'll see what happens. I'll talk to you in a second. So that was a dreadful transfer window. Nobody in, nobody out. Still got a million in the bank. Let's hope we can hang on to this top 10 finish and just not get relegated. I'm just happy if we can finish. If we finish in 16th, 15th, 17th, as long as we're not in the bottom three, I am happy, so let's go check out the bottom half of the season. So, I'm pretty stoked with this. We did it much better than I expected. Our squad, in my opinion, probably isn't good enough to last in the Premier League, or maybe bare last, like 17th, 16th sort of team, but we have held on and we have finished in ninth position. I'm not even kidding when I say I genuinely expect us to finish lower next season, even if we even if we improve our squad. But I'll take it. Norwich, ninth in the first season. Looking at the top of the table, Chelsea did go ahead of Leicester to win the Premier League. And the drop zone stayed the same. The teams just got rearranged as Hull and Middlesbrough go straight back down. And Crystal Palace, they joined them. Taking a look at the FA Cup, it is Manchester City winning that tournament. We are nowhere to be seen. Same deal with the Carabao Cup. We don't even make it onto the screen. Swansea go on to win that, however. Barcelona did win the Champions League 3-2 over 
AC Milan. Was that back-to-back -back Champions Leagues for Barcelona? And Schalke managed to get their hands on the Europa League title, defeating Bilbao in the final of that tournament. So season two, our first one in the Premier League, exceeded every expectation I had. We made some quality signings. We're finished mid till near yeah, mid table, top of the table, sec top half of the table in the Premier League. Season three, I don't know whether to be excited or expecting worse results, but we'll find out now. Let's get into season three with Norwich. We kick off season number three with a huge defensive signing. Signing Axel Twanzebe. I apologize if I've butchered the young fella's name, but we signed the 21-year-old centre-back from Man United for £8 million, which is a great steal there. Welcome to Norwich, Axel Twanzebe. Another quality defensive pickup as we sign Thilo Keira, or Kira from Schalke for £9.5 million. So our two starting centre-back spots have been completely flipped and it looks so much better. There is no reason why we can't go even better this season in the Premier League now that we've got these two guys in. I've done this a few times during the entire rebuilding series, but I've accidentally accepted a loan offer for Dialan Giasimi, whatever his name is. He's off to Lincoln City for the next year. Won't affect us too much, too much, but I'll show you regardless. And here we are with one hour to go on transfer deadline day. Tuanzebe and Kera in, two centre backs in, and that guy we loaned out hasn't gone officially, but he will be going in any second now. So let's check in halfway through the season and see if we can replicate what we did last season. So here we are on the 1st of January, 2020. And if I'm being honest, I am still content with this position at the moment. We're on 13th position, 23 points, seven points out of the drop zone, seven points away from West Brom. Holy crap, Spurs are dead last. Tottenham are in 20th position on 10 points. I can almost guarantee you that they don't get relegated because I've seen that many... I've simulated FIFA that much where the big teams never get relegated, but Man City, Liverpool, and Spurs are all below us. No surprise to see Man United, Chelsea, and Leicester once again the top three. But focusing on ourselves, we're definitely, we've got potential to go either way. We've got potential to finish top 10, or we've got potential to get relegated. So... We really need to hope we just put in another solid second half of the season. So we're going to spend our entire transfer budget or wage budget. We've converted all our transfer transfer budget to wages to bring in this man here, Felipe Anderson, £90,000. He's taking a £5,000 pay cut just to join us. It was either between him or Jesus Corona, but I know that Felipe Anderson is an absolute weapon in this game. If you've seen my Man United career mode, you would know that as well. Felipe Anderson, welcome to Norwich next season. A player departure here on transfer deadline day. Tim Close, who has been here since the first season, is off now to Stuttgart for £4.3 million. Probably don't have enough money to go in for a quality signing now at the back end of the window, but I might look to piss a few people off and sign another pre-contract player. I mean, I've only done two so far this rebuild, but I, I, I hear you guys that get angry at it, but I love it. I love the pre-contracts. There it is, boys. Get in there. We've got another pre-contract player, and it's a good one. Our squad's going to look so much better in season number four. Now, Nabil Fakir... We're going to be playing him at striker next season, but the plan is to play him at striker next season and then probably the season after that, try going in for a world-class striker and put him back at attacking midfielder. But that's what we're going to do right now. Nabil Fakir, welcome to Norwich. Next season, that is. So there we go. That's the end of the January window here. Philippe Anderson and Nabil Fakir in closer out. Where are we going to finish the Premier League season? Let's find out. So we left it really tight at the end here. We finished two spots and four points out of the relegation zone. Definitely contrasting results compared to season two where we finished in ninth. Now we finished in 16th, but I mean, we didn't get relegated. The teams that do get relegated are Brighton, West Brom, and Aston Villa. And the team that wins the comp, Man United, pulled out in the second half of the season and have just completely wiped the floor. We made it. No, we didn't. We made it to the quarterfinals. 
I just finished recording the West Brom rebuild yesterday. I've been getting ahead on these videos and I'm so used to being with West Brom. I thought we made it to the FA Cup final, but we've made it to the quarterfinals. Chelsea went on and won it. And again, we got eliminated in the quarterfinals of the League Cup where we lost to Everton 3-0. Chelsea won that cup as well. Real Madrid finally get their hands on a Champions League title in this video. They defeat Bayern Munich 2-1. And Inter Milan take down Espanyol 1-0 to win the Europa League. So here's a look at our squad report at the end of season number three. If you want to have a slight quick look at somebody's individual stats, make sure that you pause and have a look. But I'm pretty excited to see what we can do in season number four. Got a few new players coming in, of course, Felipe Anderson and Nabil Fakir. So it's going to take us to a whole new level. Harry Winks is progressing pretty well as you would have just seen along with a few more of our players so hopefully next season we can take things to the next level and maybe push for European football if we're lucky but I definitely think European football cards is on European football is on the cards within the next two seasons. So there we go. A little bit of a disappointing season on the path. Off it though, a great season, some great signings, and I'm interested to see how season four contrasts. Let's get into that now. We're going to kick off season number four here with a player departure. Grant Hanley is off to West Brom for £6.2 million. And the man that we bought in season one, Joe Bryan, has departed the club after a few seasons here. He heads off to Real Betis in La Liga for £22.8 million. So a pretty nice return on investment. Let's go sign ourselves a left back that can last us for the entirety of the rebuild now. And we have done just that. A few days after selling, selling Brian, we have brought ourselves in Benjamin Mendy from Manchester City. The new French left back is joining us for 30 million pounds. Great piece of business. Welcome to Norwich, Benjamin Mendy. Tom Tribal is the latest player to depart the club here. The midfielder is off to Colm for 6.6 .6 million pounds. So a pretty interesting transfer window here. Slowly but surely upgrading our side and getting us into a half decent position. So Benjamin Mendy in, Hanley, Brian and Tribal out. I'm interested to see how we go with our big signings now. Let's get to January and see how we go. All right, here we are on the 1st of January and we are sitting mid-table, so not too bad of a season so far. Definitely a lot better than we were last year, but it is very close again. We could, it's happened so many times in this rebuild where we look at the table, we're sitting mid-table, we could either finish top of the table, or not top, I think top's a bit of a stretch, but top half of the table or bottom half, like high, high or low, low, really, like really easily. It's good to see also that my vocabulary is feeling very expanded today. In the drop zone right now, however, is Sheffield Wednesday, Bournemouth, Crystal Palace, and Chelsea, Stoke, the top four really, Burnley as well. They're all doing pretty damn well. My love for the pre-contracts in FIFA 18 is unconditional. Yarn all black, Coming to Norwich next season. Look at him, 92 rated, and he's choosing to sign for Norwich. Either he has a lot of confidence in me, the money we're offering him is ridiculous, or the game is broken. One of those three options, but Yarno Black next season in season five will be playing for the Canaries. He'll be coming to Carrow Road. Welcome next season, 92 rated Yarnel Black. A player departure here with a week to go in January. Christoph Zimmerman off to Nottingham Forest for just over four million pounds. A deadline day departure here as Louis Thompson is moving to Middlesbrough for 4.3 million pounds. A big deadline day signing as we sign Henry Onyekuru from Everton for, how much are we signing for? 19.5 million pounds plus Murphy. A great pickup. Gonna slot straight into our starting 11. Welcome to Norwich on deadline day, Henry Onyekuru. All right, so it's been a very eventful transfer window. Yarno Black and Onyekuru in. Murphy, Zimmerman, and Thompson out. Slowly but surely improving Norwich and turning us into a real contender here. So 
Let's check into the end of the season and see what sort of predicament we find ourselves in heading into season number five. All right, so another mediocre season. This rebuild is really proving to be tough. We, we did so well for the first two seasons and we've kind of just, I don't know, like plateaued there, just kind of stayed the same. But we finished 12th in the Premier League. I think with some big signings coming next season, most notably Jan Oblak, and then I'm hopeful that we can sign a big player or two in the transfer window. We could maybe push to Europa League qualification maybe, but 12th position, I mean, I'll take it, but I'm not thrilled about it. Chelsea win the league again this season. Pretty strong top four. And then Wolves, Crystal Palace, and Sheffield Wednesday all go down to the championship. Checking out the FA Cup, we were eliminated in the round of 16 after a loss to Man United. Chelsea, their second piece of silverware so far, they won the FA Cup. We went a little bit further in the League Cup where we lost to Bournemouth in the quarterfinals. Southampton did go on to defeat West Ham in that tournament. In the Champions League, it was Real Madrid getting yet another title. They defeated Bayern Munich 2-0. And in the Europa League, it was Liverpool getting them ha their hands on some silverware as they take down Sporting 2-1 in the final there. We're trotting along here with the Canaries. Slow but steady progress. Let's see if we can take the leap in season number five and get us some European bloody football. All right, we're gonna kick off season number five here with a massive defensive signing. I thought we needed to improve our back line a little bit, so I have brought in one of my favorite players in FIFA 18, Victor Lindelof. The Swede comes to Manchester United for 21.4 million pounds, plus Kevin Mababu. And I thought, like, we can put Lindelof in center back, and then I'm gonna move Kiera, our other center back, to the right back spot because he can play there. Works out better for the team. But anyways, welcome to Norwich, Victor Lindelof. A player departure here. A little bit of a sad one as Nelson Oliveira, who has been here for the past five seasons in the rebuild, is now off to Middlesbrough for 10.4 million pounds. Sold him whilst he was still worth a decent amount. So best of luck, mate. Goodbye. Another transfer here in the back end of the window. Lewis Cook, someone I was looking at bringing in right from the start, is finally a canary as he joins us for 15 million pounds plus Mohamed Bezic. Got to slowly upgrade, got to get rid of the players we had at the start, replace them with newer ones so we can keep growing and heading towards Champions League glory. So, welcome to Norwich City, Lewis Cook. So, that signing of Cook is going to end our business here in the opening window. A very successful one, to be honest. Lindelof and Cook in, Oliveira, Mababu, and Mohamed Bezic out. Our team looks solid now. I definitely think if we don't get Champions League qualification this season, then that is a big time fail. But I'll see you guys in January where hopefully we can continue to upgrade our squad. All right, here we are on the 1st of January, 2022. And we are definitely in the hunt for Champions League football. Right now, sitting in seventh position on 29 points, but looking at second place Leicester, they're on 32 points. So there's three points between seventh and uh, second. So, I've got a bit of confidence. Everton, surprisingly, are leading the league. You know, if you look at their real life form right now, you wouldn't expect to see something like that. But looking at the drop zone, Middlesbrough, West Ham, and Swansea all involved there. So I'm really hopeful that we can finish in the top four this season. Let's get into the January window, though, and see what business we can achieve. So our opening piece of business for this window is going to be the transfer of Harry to follow to Birmingham City for four and a half million pounds. There comes a time in every rebuild where I must abuse the pre-contracts. It is just, it is just the law at this point. It is written into the rebuild contracts at this point. Two massive signings putting us into Champions League contention. And I'm going to call it a quits after this, these two transfers. So, Diego Lorente and Harry Kane, the man that played three games on loan for Norwich, is joining his former club, I guess. We're going to sign Harry Kane on a free transfer next season from Barcelona. And Diego Lorente, he is also coming on a free transfer from Real Sociedad. So, in season number six... We will be welcoming Diego Lorente and Harry Kane. So that will conclude our dealings for the January transfer window in 2022. Kane 
and Lorente in next season to follow out right now. I am so excited to see what our squad looks like in season number six, but let's try pushing for Champions League qualification. I will see you at the end of the season. Are you serious? How have we not qualified? We finished the bloody season in sixth position. How have we not got Champions League football? That is so frustrating. We're going to have players like Harry Kane, Nabil Fakir, all these big name players, and we're not even in European football. This rebuild is not turning out the way I expected. And of course, Men United somehow get back and win the Premier League title somehow. Checking out the drop zone, it is going to be Brighton, Bournemouth, and Middlesbrough all going down. At least our luck did swing in the FA Cup. We're going to be playing in the Europa League, I believe, as we defeat Tottenham 3-0 in the FA Cup final. The same, however, cannot be said about the Carabao Cup. We don't even make it to the last 16. Real Madrid win an El Clasico Champions League final in Season 5. And Saint Etienne, fair play to them. The French side win the Europa League. So here's a quick look at our squad report at the conclusion of Season number 5. Definitely progressing a lot slower than I expected. Originally, when I started recording, I thought to myself, all right, let's try winning it in six seasons. We're not going to be able to do it in six seasons. It's going to have to be seven at least, and I think by the time we hit season seven, we are going to be in a great position to do it, but we have to qualify first. I mean, we thought we were going to qualify this season. We didn't. We need to make sure we qualify next season. Otherwise, this is just going to get embarrassing. So let's get to it. I'll see you all for season number six. So here we are kicking off season number six with a big transfer for our midfield. Carl's Elena coming from the Barcelona B side. So their backup side in the second division, 87 rated, which is mental. And he had a release clause of 27.8 million, which we paid, obviously. He's valued at 55 million. We've picked up an absolute steal. So welcome to Norwich City, Carl's Elena. Carles, Carl's, whatever. So here we are on transfer deadline day. Only had the signing of Elena throughout the season. I think what I'm going to do, we don't have all that much money, decent wage budgets, but I don't really want to be doing any more pre-contract signing. So when we hit January, I'll probably look to sign a backup striker and then next season look to bring in a top quality right back. But let's make sure we qualify for the Champions League next season. I'll see you in January. All right, so this is what I want to see and what I'm expecting. We're halfway through the season. We're well and truly in the title race, tied on points with Chelsea and only behind on goal difference by one goal. So things are looking all right at the moment. Hopefully we can continue this for the second half of the season and qualify for the Champions League in season seven. Looking at the squad we have, I would not be surprised if we went the whole way in our first season. Looking at the drop zone, however, it is Derby County, Leicester City and West Bromwich Albion all in the bottom three. A Norwich player wins the Ballon d'Or. Yeah, boy. So we have successfully done what we wanted to. We have brought ourselves in a new striker. It is going to be H3H3. I, I, I mean, Alexander Mitrovic, the Serbian, is joining from Newcastle United for £13 million. We did the business that we needed to with the limited funds we had available. So hopefully it works out for us. Hopefully we qualify for Champions League and anything on top of that is a bonus. I'll see you guys at the end of season number six. Well, what a time to be alive. Norwich City are the premiers of the Premier League, the premiers of England, champions of England. We, we finish above Chelsea to win the Premier League here in season number five on goal differential. Season six, I should say. But we finish six goals clear of Chelsea to lift the Premier League title. Great stuff to see, but most importantly, we play Champions League football next season, and I see no reason why we can't do it in the first season. Dropping down to the drop zone, we look, and it is Aston Villa, 
Stoke City and Derby County all making their way to the championship. Earlier in the season, we lost to Community Shield. We were unable to go back to back in the FA Cup, losing to Man City in the quarterfinals. Again, unable to do anything in the League Cup. QPR have that honor, have that honor. I'm starting to lose the ability to speak. Although some of your comments would probably, probably argue that I lost the ability to speak a long time ago. Manchester United win the Champions League. Everton made it to the semis, fair play. And Man City win the Europa League. We made it all the way to the semi-finals. That is a quality effort. Season 6, done and dusted. We have built this squad to an amazing level. Very, very confident that next season we can complete this rebuild finally. It's taken me three days to record. Let's get into it. Let's get into Season 7 with Norwich. We're going to kick off this seventh season with a massive defensive signing, virtually putting the final piece of the puzzle into our defensive signings, our whole starting 11, I would say, as we sign Ashraf Hakimi, the Moroccan right back, originally from Real Madrid, went to West Ham, now at Norwich City. We signed him from David Moyes' West Ham for £36 million. So, Hakimi, welcome to Norwich. I was not interested in doing any other business in this window besides bringing in a new right back to strengthen our starting 11. This is what it looks like. If that is not a world-class side, then I don't know what is. If we don't win the Champions League this season, my game plan will be get in a new right midfielder, and maybe probably keep Harry Kane because he's 30 now, I believe. So he's only going to start going down next season. But definitely a new right midfielder because Anderson is 30 right now, almost 31. But we're going to focus all our attention on winning it this year. Let's go and check out our group for the first time ever. Yeah, right, sweet. Hakimi, we sign him, then he breaks his tibia. The moment we finish the transfer window. Yeah, just my luck. So we have an interesting group here. Barcelona stands out as probably our biggest competition in the group. But then St. Etienne make the, made the Europa League final and won it the other season. And Celtic are just, they're a staple of European football. So we're going to really be up against it here. I'm interested to see how we go. Big test. Let's simulate now and see how we just go. All right, get in there. We qualified. Us and Barcelona dominate the group. We finished top on 13 points. Barca in second on 12 points. Funnily enough, they didn't have a single loss, but we had one more win. So we go through. Let's check out the round of 16. Where are we? We are in the middle left. We take on Monaco in the last 16, which is going to be an interesting matchup for sure. Monaco always seem to have really good teams on FIFA, so I'm interested to see how we go against them. All right, here we are halfway through this Premier League season. We are top of the table once again. Seven points clear. That is exactly what we want to see. And even more impressively, if you take a look down to third and fourth and fifth, the positions we need to kind of stay above, we're 16 points clear of them, so we're in an awesome position to qualify for the Champions League next season again if we don't win it this year. All right, so if I'm being 100% transparent, I've just simulated my way through this entire transfer window. There is no need, in my opinion, to go out and buy any more players. Nobody we buy will really make that big of an impact, I think. I am really confident. I don't know if I've ever been more confident that we're going to win the Champions League. We've taken so long to get here, and I think we've built ourselves up perfectly for it. Let's go and get into our Champions League knockout games and see if my cockiness pays off. I really hope it does. All right, here we go. We travel to the French League. We travel to Monaco for the first leg of our Champions League round of 16. Hopefully, it is the first leg on a road to glory. Away goals would be brilliant, but we all know how good Monaco's team can be in FIFA. I'm pretty confident that Mbappe is going to be like 95 rated by now. Valdez Dial does get a red card though, which helps us because he is a weapon. We get an away goal through Onyekuru. A second one for Onyekuru. This guy is on fire. Two away goals is a godsend. A third one will virtually book our spot in the quarterfinals. Can we get it? No, we can't. 2-0, though, is still a fantastic result. All right, we have the home leg now. 
Caro Road welcoming AS Monaco. Let's see if we can knock them out of the Champions League and get ourselves a spot in the quarterfinals in the last eight. We're 2-0 up here. We have two away goals, so we just need to make sure we don't concede and we will be fine. If it stays like how it is now, I will be more than happy. Their keeper, Lopez, does get an injury. Harry Kane makes it 3-0. Surely that is going to see us get through. They need to score three goals now, and it's not looking good for them. They've got 15 minutes. I'm pretty confident we're going through now. Yep, we're going to be going through full-time. One new result, I'll cop it. So our quarterfinal opponents for the Champions League is going to be Inter Milan. Very excited to see how we go against them. Again, another team with great high potential youngsters. Very hopeful, very confident we can knock them down and get ourselves a semi-final spot. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the quarterfinals. So Mendy, Winks and Cook are all out through suspension for this first leg. Thankfully, it's only suspension rather than injury purposes, but I'm still hopeful that the team we have on the park can get the job done. Excited to see the Inter Milan side. I know Asenio is pretty good. Munier is good. Sars decent. Tammy Abraham. They've got a lot of youngsters in there. Martinez gets injured for them. They've got Davi Klaassen. Felipe Anderson gets us the lead here. That is definitely what you want to see. Sane equalizes and gets them an away goal. So I would say it's advantage into Milan right now. Though Felipe Anderson does get us back in front with a brace. They miss. No, we miss a penalty. Damn it, Madison. That would have been so big if we went 3-1 up. But 2-1 headed into the second leg. Hopefully their away goal does not stuff us up. All right, we travel away to the San Siro now for the away leg against Inter Milan. Back to full strength. Mendy, Cook, and Winks all back in the starting 11. We need to make sure we score an away goal. We're 2-1 up. Nil all would be the perfect result for me. It would get us through to the semifinals, but an away goal would be nice. If they score a goal, though, if they go up 1-0, then they are in control big time. We're nearing halfway now, and nothing has really happened in this tie, which I mean is fine by me. No injuries, no suspensions, nil all draw. I will be happy by that. Ten minutes to go. It is make or break at the moment. A few minutes to go, and like I said at the start of the game, it ends nil all, and we've booked ourselves a spot in the semi-finals. We are doing really well at the moment. Borussia Dortmund are going to be our semi-final opponents. They took down Spartak Moscow and Sporting in their two previous ties. So, I mean, I guess you could say that we're really their first big test in this Champions League knockout sort of tournament. It's going to be really interesting. On the other side of things, it has been really tough as well for both Real Madrid and Barcelona, who face off in an El Clasico semi-final. They have both had tremendously tough runs to the semi-finals. So... Yeah, we need to focus on ourselves, but it is a big challenge looming in the distance if we can manage to get to the Champions League final. But anyways, let's focus on taking down Dortmund. Let's get into the semi-finals right now. All right, let's do it, fellas. The moment of truth, the home leg now against Borussia Dortmund. Let's not concede like we did against Inter Milan because they had an away goal and couldn't make the most of it. But something tells me if Dortmund score they will be able to make the most of it. So we don't want that to happen. Onyukuru scores us a goal and gets us a 1-0 advantage. Dortmund have a really good side. Onyukuru with a brace. We're 3-1 up. We could have gone 4-0 up. 3-0 up at the moment. Fakir Onyukuru. Kane makes it 4-0. They get an away goal. But I mean, it's 4-1. Four goals is incredible. Wow. When I said we were really good this season, I didn't think we were 4-1 against Dortmund good. May 8th. 2024, we travel away to the Signal Aduna Park in Dortmund. We've got one player out, and that is Diego Lorente. I'm hopeful, I'm pretty confident we're, we're going to make the final now, but I'm confident he will be back for the final, unless we collapse big time today, and it is not a good sign for them to get a goal, but we wipe the away goal out of the equation for them, as Hakimi makes it one all, which means it is... 5-2 on aggregate in our favor. That would have been big if Fakir scored that. But Elena, early in the second half, extends our lead. We're pretty much there. Zelensky ties it up for them. What's that? That is 6-3. We're 6-3 up here. And we're going to head to the Champions League final for our first time 
in this Norwich rebuild, if we can do it in the, if we can have a clean sweep in the first attempt, that would be incredible. We've had an amazing run of form in rebuilds as a whole. A lot of you guys fire up at me and say, oh, you're cheating, uh, it's not good that you win every time. I'm just good at FIFA lately. I'm starting to get good at it. I'm starting to learn how to play it. But anyways, we're probably going to lose now that I've said that. Let's stop banging on. Let's get in there and let's look at the rest of the season. Barcelona versus Norwich in the Champions League final for 2024. Incredible stuff to see. We have been really strong all throughout the Champions League knockout rounds. We've got one hurdle left to tackle in what has been a ginormous rebuild so far. Let's smash them, let's roll over them, let's beat Barcelona to a pole. Before we do that, we're going to check out the rest of the tournaments. Lille did win the Europa League. We go back to back in the Premier League. We had an incredible season, only two losses all year. 10 points ahead of Man United, so if we don't win tonight against Barcelona, we get to go all over again in Season 8. Leicester City relegated, which is crazy to see, along with Brighton and Bournemouth. Unfortunately, earlier in the season, we lost on penalties to Man City in the Community Shield. We got eliminated in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. We got eliminated in the round of 16 of the Carabao Cup, so besides the Premier League and the Champions League, it's been an average season. Before we get into the Champions League final, as always, we have a look at our squad report. Hopefully, it's the last time we have to look at this squad report. But one thing I'm really sad about is for the final, we're going to be out with Kales Elena. Or Kales, yeah, Elena. 90 rated, and he's out through suspension, which is absolute horse crap. Not happy about that at all, which makes our job so much harder. But I'm still confident heading into this game that we can get a job done. It's going to be tough. We're going to have to be smart. But with some amazing world-class players in here, anything can happen. So let's take on Barcelona. A monster challenge in what has been a monster rebuild. Can we deliver a Champions League title to Carrow Road? Let's find out. Barcelona running through here. Gerard Delafeu, someone I want to use in a rebuild very soon. Tackled from Winks. That is terrible from the Spaniard. Now we're on the counter-attack, hopefully. Early opportunities always welcomed. I see you out wide. Onyakuru, he scored plenty of goals in this rebuild. And he doesn't. He almost got us off to the perfect start there. Good stuff here. Lewis Cook going over the top. Philippe Anderson. Probably his last game for us. Almost. That was he actually did pretty well to get the shot off there. Alright, we get a free oh, we, get, we get a corner here. It's gonna be Felipe Anderson to put this one in there. On Yukuru! He scores it! What a header! On Yukuru! Oh my goodness gracious me! What a header that was there! I believe he's Nigerian, but the left midfielder, that is a genuine rocket! Oh my god, this guy has been looking real deadly so far. And Barcelona, to be honest, have had a lot of the possession. I have thought he had no chance there when we headed it from that deep. Look at the pace on that one. They had the man on the post. They couldn't get to it. I thought when I headed that, I'm like, all right, sweet. We're going to try just getting it on target, trying to get another corner. But we found the back of the net, and we have the lead in the Champions League final. Oh, my goodness gracious me. What a header. Come on. Can we get another opportunity here before half time? We've had literally no possession in their half, but we're getting all the opportunities because Barcelona's passing techniques have been terrible. Barcelona have lacked that last little pass, but we have a somewhat undeserved lead heading into half time here. Come on, we just need to soak up possession 
and hopefully hit them on the counter attack. Can't give them any shooting opportunities though. Paco Alcacer, they've equalized, honestly. I don't know who was marking Delafeu. Was it Hakimi? How did we let him get goal side? I wasn't marking, I wasn't controlling Hakimi. That is all down the computer. To be fair, I shouldn't have let Alcacer run in like that, but Barcelona with their first shot really of the game have scored. Look at that. I shouldn't have let him run across like that. But what is Hakimi doing there? You could see Delafeu making the run in. He's just tucked that one in nicely. And it's one all now. Bloody hell, that's not how we wanted to start the second half. Come on, we need to focus on our play. And try getting back in front here. Some nice passing. Nabil Fakir holding it up. Going to Harry Kane. Going to Lewis Cook. No, it's Wings. What a goal. Harry Wings. That is how you respond. I'm going to let that entire sequence play because I think we scored that off the kickoff. Holy moly, what a strike. Oh my god. Harry Winks, that was incredible. I just, I thought that was Lewis Cook at first, but what a finish. So much power. Oh wow, we are back in front after conceding. We're passing it around here. Paco Alcacer, nice touch to take it, take it past our defenders, but it's a terrible last pass. Not really sure what he was trying to attempt there. Now can we get them on the counter-attack from it? Now, Bill Fakir going through to Harry Kane, who really hasn't had too many opportunities. Bearing down here, squares it. Fakir, that was a weird-ass animation. We can't get first to it. Probably should have taken that strike with Harry Kane, but a decent attempt anyways. We're going to switch the play up there, going to Hakimi. Goes back to Cook. Soaking up a lot of clock here, which is fine by me. We just need to be patient here and give, give ourselves a great look. Good stuff from Onyakuru. Puts it across the face. Blocked. Follow up. Winks off the post. Follow up. Harry Kane scores it. Oh, he's offside. Oh, I thought that was it. That would have been the Champions League final, but he's offside. Usman Dembele running through the ball. Nice ball there. What a save from Jan Oblak. Barcelona have only made two real opportunities for themselves, but they've almost scored from two. That was a great ball. Oh my god. Come on, we need to put pressure on them on the defensive end of things. We've been much better in this game. We have had opportunities to score a second goal here. Good tackle there. No, why would you put it in the middle? No! I am an idiot. Jared, do you know what the X button is? I should have just pressed X since that's my... Ah, oh, that's... That is gonna, that's my biggest downfall. I always try to play out of the back instead of just booting it up the field and resetting. Look at that, we did all the hard work there with Lewis Cook. Granted, why did it pass it there? Why wouldn't it go to the guy that's closest to me rather than trying to play it in the middle? I press A and it plays it all the way across there, but I shouldn't have pressed A, I should have pressed X. Damn it! Good stuff from Lorente. Good stuff from Winks. I see you, Philippe Anderson. Brilliant ball. Bring it down. Anderson on the angle. Oh, I thought we were going to get another goal. We get a corner, though. All right, big opportunity here. Can we score off another corner here? Nabil Fakir floats that one in there. Mendy falls down. Is he going to get to it? He is. Mendy's going to be first to it. We switch it out wide, but why Lindelof? Why would you stick your leg out at that? Do we have time to hit them on the counter-attack here and have a go? I don't want it going to extra time, but it, it's a terrible pass. And now Barcelona in a great opportunity of scoring here. And winning Usman Dembele's shot is relatively tame. And undeservedly, we are headed to extra time. We have been all over them, but unlike Barcelona, we have been unable to make the most of our chances. They're on the attack here. Good stuff from Felipe Anderson. Nabil Fakir running straight up the guts here. Good stuff from him. He's going to lay it off wisely. Going to Felipe Anderson. Goes back. Nabil Fakir. Oh, what a challenge from Koulibaly. Get the corner from it, though. It's going to be Felipe Anderson lobbing that one in there. It's the same area where we got it from before. Felipe Anderson with the ball again. He's done this in the United Career Mode Series, where he runs through, finesses, and it almost, he scored that in the Man United Career Mode Series with him. We get the throw in here. We're going to go nice and quickly there to Harry Kane. Wisely goes back to Mendy. Do we have time before half time? Harry Winks, go through. Harry Winks, he scored earlier. Another save from Testagen. Free kick here. 105th minute, 25 yards out. Nabil Fakir lines this one up, hits it, and it's curled straight to Testagen. That's the bad thing about these rebuilds in terms of like free kicks and set pieces. 
You don't know how each player uses and takes their free kicks. Damn it. All right, we're going to make a substitution here at halftime. Pritchard coming on for Onyakuru, who's been really good, but he just doesn't have the legs to last this one, unfortunately. Good stuff. Lindelof to win that one. Gets us back into a good position. Pritchard with the fresh legs. Kane through to Pritchard. Shoots. He scores off the bench. What a substitution that has proved to be. Pritchard, who has been here since day one. He plays for Norwich in real life. Might have just won us the Champions League final. That is brilliant. What a one-two there between Pritchard and Harry Kane. Still about five, six minutes to go. But it looks like our substitution has paid off. Fresh legs work out well, and we have the lead here. Thank the Lords for that. Come on, we need to hold them out. We've gone defensive and counter-attacking. I'm sure they've gone all-out attack. We cannot allow Barcelona an opportunity to shoot, and good defense like that helps, but got to press X. No! No! Are you serious? I hate this game. I hate this game. I press X to clear it. it, they win the header, it falls straight to Usman Dembele, and they've equalised it. Well, there goes that freaking theory. I'm trying not to swear, but I am I am livid at the moment. Look at this. Look, I press X to try clearing it like I preached. They win the header, it goes straight to Dembele. That is a, that's a stitch up. Lindelof was in no man's land, and they've equalised. This game has been bullcrap. The FIFA gods have not been on our side. Barcelona trying to get one last opportunity, but we're off the penalty shootout. This is so nerve-wracking. We have deserved to win this game by a country mile, but it is three all. Barcelona versus Norwich City. Let's do it. Come on, I'm so nervous. I mean, look at that. 18 shots to eight. They've just been more clinical. This is going to be huge. Barcelona versus Norwich City penalty shootout. We need to set the right tone here. We go left. De Stegen stays there. We need to make a big save here. Delafeu. Which way are you going to go, buddy? Which way are you going to go? He is going to go to the right-hand side. He chips it. What are you doing? What are you doing? As if you tried chipping it in the Champions League final. And a terrible chip at that. We're going to go right. De Stegen saves it. No. Ah, uh, we telegraphed that so early. Dembele, he's going to go to the right-hand side. No, he tucks it bottom left. And it's all tied up now. We need to score this one. Pritchard, let's go right again. We're going to put this one top right-hand corner. I hope not top right-hand corner, but we find the back of the net. All right, Janeiro, Cairo. Which way are you going to go? This is a big run-up. Usually when they do this, they blow it over the crossbar. He's going to go left. It's saved from All Black. We're back in front, baby. Lindelof, I don't trust you. We're going to go to the right-hand side again. Come on, mate. Lindelof shoots. It's in. Oh, oh, my God. I said that we didn't have the FIFA goals on our side, but we did then. That's the new cutscene, but this is to win the Champions League final, if we save it, against Paco Alcacer. Which way are you going to go, buddy? Which way are you going to go? He's going to go to the right-hand side. It is saved. We go the right way. Yano Black wins the Champions League final for us. What a save. What a shootout. What a game. What a rebuild. Fellas, if you enjoyed today's Norwich City rebuild, an absolute classic of the rebuilding series, make sure you leave a like on the video. Make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. Make sure you check out my social media links and all that good stuff. I am over the moon right now. I am absolutely pumped. It has been Jared HD here. Enjoy the title celebrations. I'm out. Peace. Holy moly.
ocean Come together making memories in motion With the traces of the chosen Let's come together with a heart wide open